Welcome to the Daily Chronological Bible. My name's Hunter, and we are reading through the Bible in chronological order as a single story. And that story is all about Jesus. It is a revelation of him, and he has revealed to us the heart of the Father. Today, November the 4th, we are reading selections from Mark chapter 15, Matthew 27, Luke 23, and John chapter 19. We're reading from the New Living Translation. This is the word of the Lord. Mark 15, beginning in verse 21. A passerby named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. Along the way, they came across a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross, and they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children, for the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the people who are childless, the wombs that have not borne a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done, when the tree is green... What will happen when it is dry? So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place called Place of the Skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they had crucified him. A sign announced the charges against him. It read, The King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha, look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so we can see it and believe him. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charges against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to a place called the Skull, they nailed him to a cross. And the criminals were also crucified on his right and on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. 
The crowd watched, and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he really is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him, too, by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us, too, while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God? Even when you've been sentenced to die, we deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you today you will be with me in paradise. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, Change it from the King of the Jews to he said I am the King of the Jews. Pilate replied, No, what I have written I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, Rather than tear it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that said, They divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, they said. Let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the officer who stood facing him saw how he died, he exclaimed, This man was truly the Son of God. Some women were there, watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, And he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. Rocks split apart and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people.
The Roman officer and the soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the Son of God. And many women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. This time it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowds that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill scripture he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it and put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath because it was the Passover week. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so that you also may continue to believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scripture that says not one of his bones will be broken and they will look on the one they pierced. Thank you for joining us at the Daily Chronological Bible. You can find the specifics of our reading plan in the One Year Chronological Bible, published by Tyndall Press. And you can find out more about our other podcasts at dailyradiobible.com, where people from all around the world come to join us in this journey through the scriptures, where we allow the scriptures to point us to the God who is love, the God revealed to us fully in Jesus. Again, that website is dailyradiobible.com. Until tomorrow, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. Thank you.